these days we're taking our animals all over the United States and we do it by trailer. And I find that the safest trailer that we have today is your slant load trailer. It's open, each one of the doors get out of the way, the mule sees lots of room to be able to go in and out. The downside is one day some little problem happens and the mule now is afraid to go in there. That's when you find out if your mule is truly hal halter trained. Because all of a sudden you start to walk and all of a sudden the mule says, I don't want to go. So that means your halter must be properly adjusted. We want to make sure we don't go past three. So we're going to ask tail demand. So I'm going to ask my mule to go forward. That's my number one step. He starts to go forward but hesitates. Then I'm going to tell him to go forward. And if he doesn't want to do it, then I'm doing something incorrectly. Also, I could be that the halter's not adjusted correctly. So I'm going toward the halter. I'm going toward the door. I go off here to the left a little bit. Then I go off to the right. Then I bump him forward again. Don't keep on doing it. Don't come up to the gate. Turn around and go back. Come up to the gate. Turn around. Don't do that because you're giving him what he wants. <coughs> and that is to leave this spot. He figures this place here is a really uncomfortable place. He's been hurt in there. Something's went wrong. Who knows whatever it is. So if you go up to the door, turn around and go back out, you're giving him what he wants as soon as he turns around. Even if you just tie him to that spot and just leave him there, that's okay. Guess what? He has to listen to that halter. When he pulls back on the halter, the halter bumps him on the pole. When he goes over to the left, it bumps him on his nose. Bumps over to the right, it bumps him on the nose. So if the halter is adjusted correctly, two fingers above the nostril and each not in the nostril, as you'll see in my other videos, he'll respect the halter. And remember, no pulling. Always bump, bump, bump. <clears throat> in my video, you've seen uh, uh, where I've worked with a mule that didn't want to go in the trailer. And that mule dragged me all over the place. But in result, the mule went in. But <clears throat> you never did see me keep on training and doing the same thing over and over again. Because if you do it more, if you do it a third time, it now becomes a habit. It now becomes a foundation. So you only do it twice. The demanding only comes in when you've actually, you've done it and the mule knows. Then, you, you, then he says, I ain't going to go. Then you're going to go into the demanding stage. But when you're training, never do it over two times. If you do it over two times, they're going to know that that's, that's fact for them, and you don't want to do that. So I load him three times. I go put him away. I load him three more times at six. <coughs> I load him three more times, nine. Three more times, 12. Now i got a foundation. Now if he go up to the gate and he says no, I'm going to ask him, bump. I'm going to tell him, bump, bump, and I'm going to demand upon him. Bump, 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 and really make him sore. So the big thing with trailers is today's trailer is far superior. We have a better axle assembly. We have better roads. We have better pulling and things like this. Uh, <coughs> can some of them get in there and be all sweaty and nervous? Yeah, just like you and I. We'll get in there, and but I've loaded this mule 50 times, Steve. No, no, no. You got to remember that they have hair, they have skin, they have brains, and when something bothers them, that's the way they're going to tell you we got a problem here, you know. So sometimes it just takes tying them in there and leaving them in there. Okay, Stevie's pawing. Take a 18 inches of heavy chain, put it on a strap, put it above the knee. When he goes to paw, the chain's going to hit him on the cannon bone. It's going to make him uncomfortable. When he quits pawing, pull the chain off. Hang it up where he can look at it. And he's going to think, okay, when he paws, the chain comes off of here and goes down onto his leg. He's going to think, oh, man, if I paw in this spot, are you going to get him to quit pawing? No. Pawing is part of their life. All right? It's part of the makeup. If they pause, they want something. In this particular case, I want out of here. But if you make him uncomfortable saying, okay, you paw, I'm going to put the chains on. He's going to say, oh, okay, in this spot, I don't paw. Okay? That's very, very important. Always tie with a quick release. Don't use those snaps. That's the quick release snaps. Those things there will, will make a disaster area. Always use a rope halter. Don't use nylon halters. Nylon halters brace. Make an animal brace. 
they get where they disrespect for the halter. If a properly adjusted rope halter is on that animal, like you're going to see on my videos here on YouTube, you're going to find that when that mule pulls back, that rope halter is going to mean more to him than that big web. You're thinking, oh, I'll put the web halter and be nice to him. No, you're going to teach him bad habits is what you're going to do. Take that web halter, hang it up on a nail, and just think the past is the past. I'm relieved at last. Be done with it. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the future.